What's up, my name is Technobo here for Troubleshoot and welcome back to another video. In today's video, it's more of a niche topic tackling something in programming. So if you don't know by now, I'm creating an open source bit of software that lets you quickly switch between accounts for gaming platforms, including Steam, Battle.net, Epic Games, Origin, Riot, and Ubisoft. It's a super simple thing that runs in C-sharp and Blazor, giving an nice UI while also having the speed and consistency a program like this should have. It's definitely something that hasn't been done before, and I'm glad that it's working out the way that it's working out. It's super popular. But recently, I ran across a problem. Over here, I have a previous commit that I've gone ahead and re-downloaded off of GitHub to show you an example of a problem I was experiencing. So simply firing it up, I'll open up the client and the server on the side. Basically, the client includes the server and the client starts up the server when the program actually runs. So with all that extra information aside, I'll basically just select the client and ask it to run x64 debug. Cool. Now, of course, the application will start building and it'll download all the missing NuGet packages, etc, etc. So this will take some time for the first build, but you'll see the issue in just a moment. There we go. The program's now running and the UI is open here. This is an older version from a couple of days ago. But anyways, if I go ahead and click on a platform, you'll see something in the output console over here. Exception thrown, system invalid cast exception in newtonsoft.json and exception thrown system.argument exception in system drawing common.dll. However, there wasn't an error in the client over here, which is C sharp WPF with just a single WebView 2 component on it. And the Blazor server here in the background, two separate programs, didn't throw an error anywhere. So what exactly is causing this? Well, it's actually the context menu that appears when someone right clicks. Every time I go in and out of the platform, you'll see more and more errors appear, even though the context menu actually works. So how exactly do I get to this? Well, previously I was going through the files and creating as many breakpoints as possible, trying to figure out where exactly this error is being thrown. And I was actually able to get really close to it and eventually find it, though that took hours and hours of time. Is there not an easier way to break on these exceptions that are automatically handled or just simply ignored? Well, yes, that's exactly what this video is going to show you. All you have to do to do this is head across to the exception settings over here. If you don't see this, at the very top, head across to debug, hover over windows, and then click on exception settings, control shift E. That'll bring you across to this window over here. All you have to do is locate where your error would fall under. Now, of course, it could be any one of these. So all you have to do is make sure it's checked in order for the error to be thrown, i.e. break when thrown. So if you don't necessarily know what it is, simply check it so that it's got a tick next to it so that all of the rules inside are selected. Of course, you can uncheck it later or set it back to partial where only some of these are caught. But if I tick it so that every exception is broken upon, all you have to do is cause the error to happen again. This time, you'll see you get tabbed back into Visual Studio, the correct file is open, and as you can see over here, it's showing you information of exactly what is going wrong. From here, I'm able to debug it and find out exactly what I need to change. How exactly I fixed this isn't necessarily important, but the important part was getting here in the first place. Basically, I was checking if the J token was a string, and if it wasn't, I'll simply catch the exception over here and then handle it down here because it's then an array if it's not a string. As you can see, catch invalid cast exception, but over here we have an invalid cast exception anyways. Even though it was being caught and was supposed to be being handled, it wasn't. But anyways, from here I was able to go ahead and solve it, and my issue was pretty much easy from there on. Once you're done, do head back to the exception settings window and set it back to the partial state by unchecking it and checking it once again to get the square in it, where only some of the important ones are checked. Though of course, you can leave it ticked so that you catch every exception and you'll be able to debug your program to make sure it works the best that it possibly could. So a very long video explaining something very simple, but it's something incredibly useful. Hopefully this example was enough to show you exactly what to do, as I did find tens of articles explaining the exact same thing, but they were all incredibly confusing as they just said, tick the box and something will happen. What something? Who knows? It's up to you to find out. Well. Here's a video example of exactly what an issue looks like, what happens when it's handled automatically and just simply stepped over, and what happens if you tell the program to explicitly break on it when it does happen. So anyways, that's about it for this video. Thank you for watching, my name's been Technobi here for Troubleshoot, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao!